Come on. Die, you mutant. Come on. Die. Die. Yes! Hey, hey! What's my score? Yes! 185, I am the master of the universe! Oh. You want to risk humiliation at the hands of the master? No. Computer games suck your creative energy out. Yeah, right. Suck on this instead. Thanks. <sighs> That's cool. The Felicis. So, what's up yours anyway, hmm? Smiley? I'm blocked. Try music, it works for me. I mean artistically. There's this song I want to write, you know? And there's this painting I want to paint. Life would be easier if I was only talented at one thing. Hey, I know exactly what you mean. It's just like surfing. All the best waves seem to come in while I'm chatting up the babes. I need to talk to Mary. Yeah, well, bum ruts late night shopping tonight, mate. <laughs> Hope this hand cream works. Mum has a fit every time she sees grease under my nails. What does she expect, Em? I mean, your after school job is in a garage. Yeah, and doesn't she hate it? So, are you still coming tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Meta, you promise? Yeah, no, but I mean, it's okay for you. The link program's paying for it. I have to fork out my own money. Yeah, and you want to be a checkout chick for the rest of your life. Oh, man, this course is just what you need. Look, I simply hate to interrupt this riveting conversation. But do you mind? Um, oh, sorry, I'll be right with you. So I pick you up at 8.30? Yeah, see you then. And have a nice day. Trouble is, Felicity, people don't want friendly service anymore. They want cheap. Well, I sold two microwaves in a hairdryer since lunch. Yeah, but what about fridges, stoves, the big stuff? We're just not moving it the way we used to. Well, I've got a few ideas about that. Good. Um, oh, here, Trevor's leaving. Afraid so. So you be looking for a new assistant manager, then? Well, possibly. You advertising? No, I don't think that'll be necessary. Uh, bring in the outside display, will you? There's a good lad. Yep. Oh, Emma. These cuticles are beyond repair. Yes, Mum. Why couldn't you get an after-school job in a nice boutique? Mum, please don't start. Well, a garage. Are you trying to make some sort of statement? No. I like it. <sighs> Mum, I'm kind of tired. I'd really like to get an early night. So... You're still determined to go through with this vocational thing? It's a skills assessment course. Mr. Bamford recommended me. <laughs> Man's a fascist. Any teacher worth their salt would be encouraging you to go to varsity. Mum. Oh, my darling. Think of all the fun you'd have. Boys. Beach parties. Did I ever tell you about the end of term review I was in? Yes. Many times. Hi oh, guys. Boom. Oh, what? This, this is cleaning stuff, man. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea either. Felicia's going to have a fit when he sees this place. Felicia is always having a fit about something. How's your day? Well, if you must know, terrible. Oh. I tried to paint, but it wouldn't come. So then I worked on a song. Then Mum wanted me to chop some wood. I mean, what if I got a splinter? You could try gloves. Oh, right. Thanks for your sympathy. Sorry. Do you want to stay for dinner? If I can eat. So, Wayne, what have you cooked us tonight? What about takeaways? If anyone's got any money. It's all right. I'll cook. Again. But you still need university qualifications to get a decent job. Not necessarily. Mr. Bamford says there's a whole new skills framework coming up. What would he know? He's a teacher. And I'm your mother. I went to varsity. I had a career. For five minutes. Don't talk to me like that, darling. Look, Mum, there's plenty of people on the dole with degrees. Yeah, Mum. Darling. I mean, you don't really want to be a mechanic, do you? Well, that's what this course tomorrow's about. Finding out. Are you doing this to spite me? No. Most kids would jump at the chance of a decent education. Not to mention the social life. Did I ever tell you about my first Easter tournament? Oh, yummo. Is there any more parmesan? 
Wayne, when are you going to do something about that rust bucket in the driveway? I'm sick of parking in the street. Soon, mate, soon. And you still owe me for electricity? No worries. Dull day tomorrow. And how's the job hunting going? That's next on my list after the car. Mate, it smells great. Yeah, I made spaghetti, there's heaps. Oh, thanks. I think I'll have a shower first. I can't eat anymore. Yeah? Too bad. Maddie, come to my place. I want to play you the first part of the song. I'd love to, but um, I've got a big day with Emma tomorrow. Yeah, the delectable Emma. Right. Right. Because it's what you want that's important. No, 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 don't worry about me. I can't write and I can't paint, but that's okay. Let's worry about you. Aaron! Can I come in? I'm sorry we squabbled last night. I'm not you, OK? I just want the best for you. In my day, but Mum, it's not your day. Come on, it's the 90s. Forgive me? I suppose. I know. Why don't they pick you up after school and we can go down to the mall? You don't listen to me. I've got this course all day. Oh. So you really are going, are you? I'll go shopping by myself. You said I could have the car. Yes, well, that was before. I changed my mind. Fine. I'll get the bus. So, how do I look? Like you're going to a funeral? Ignore him, you look great. Yeah? Like uh, assistant manager material? Absolutely. Man, this is the dude with the moves. How can I refuse? Do you mind, Felicia? I'm trying to eat. Looking for a job? Not so you. I thought you were doing this course. I am. Wasted time. Yeah, I'm with you, bud. I mean, all you need is a bit of effort and a good CV. If you want to work one up, I'm your man. Lisa, you're not hogging the bathroom again, are you? Hey, when you're this good looking, why wouldn't you hog the bathroom? Emma will be here in a minute. That'll be the phone. Hello? Aaron, what's up? Nothing. I couldn't sleep. We need to talk. You're in a hurry. See, that's it. You're not interested in me or my problems. <sighs> We're drifting apart, Matt, eh? Of course you're important to me. I can't. I promised him. No, Aaron, don't do anything stupid, OK? I'm on my way. Heavy. Excuse me, do you know when the next bus is due? Christmas? <laughs> well, I'm here, aren't I? I can't write, I can't paint. A fat lot you care. I'm just having a life. Some stupid course. Yeah, well, I've missed it because you're being pathetic. I mean, you got me over here under false pretenses. You didn't have to come. Yeah, big mistake. If you leave now, don't come back. OK, I won't. That late? He's merely gone. Yeah, yeah, she has. But not to the course, though. Seems like Aaron's had another crisis on the artistic front. Oh, man, never gonna get there. You couldn't give us a lift, could you? Sure, I'd love to, but unfortunately my car's stuffed. Right. Well, what's wrong with it? There we go, sir. Give you a seat to guarantee. Have a nice day now. Uh, Felici. Hey, that's my fourth sale today. You're a good lad. Uh, just doing my bit. Something you want to tell me? Yeah. You know, Trevor's leaving. It's a good bloke. Yeah. The thing is, we're not going to replace him. 
I know you had your heart set on the job, but the turnover's down and, well, the truth is I'm just going to have to let you go as well. I'm sorry, Felicity. I guess everyone's cutting corners. I thought you worked late tonight. Oh, I got laid off. Oh, mate, that's oh. awful. What about your promotion? It didn't pan out. But, um, the way I see it, right, no such thing as setbacks, only opportunities, starting as of now. Well, if you get stuck? Ah, I don't need to do a training course. But you, did you find the answer to full employment? Didn't get there. Oh, Aaron conned me into going over. I mean, I should have known better. He just wanted me to prop him up. Been telling you for months. The guy's a deadbeat. Well, it's over. I mean, if he wants to fester, he can do it on his own. Well, good on you. Oh, hi, guys. Em. Oh, Em. Oh, look, I'm really sorry I didn't get there. It's your loss. Should have made the effort, bud. It was unreal. Wayne. I don't believe it. Yep, I took your place. You did the assessment course. But you didn't have any skills, right? Ah, wrong. Computer graphics, program design. This boy's got hidden talents, mate. In fact, so hidden, not even I knew I had them. Where'd he go? Yeah, it's all just a matter of getting off your backside and going for it, right, Felicia? Right, Wayne. Yeah, I'm Marcus, and you're with Real FM, bringing you great music and bringing you the real world, the world as it really is, the world of work. Tasha Penny's world of work is in the streets of Wellington. She's a constable in her first year after graduating from police college. But as a seventh former in Gisborne, her pathway took quite a different direction. Probably about halfway through seventh form, I went to my careers advisor and sort of said, well, look, I'm, I'm interested in a people-related occupation, um, and I like writing, so, you know, journalism. And he told me all about it, and he actually arranged for me to work one day a week at our local paper, just so that I could get a look into things and make up my own mind whether it was for me or not. So I went to the Herald, uh, did my two-year cadetship and actually stayed on for four years. But after probably three and a half years, I decided, well, this, this is good, but I just felt that there was something lacking, you know, it wasn't necessarily for me. And so I thought, what do I really want to do? And I like teaching. I've always sort of, being a lawyer was always at the back of my mind. I like people, and I thought, the police. <laughs> it, it would all seem to roll into one. Whereabouts are you local guys, or? No, no. Whereabouts are you from? Oh, Coral. Coral Rua guys. Yes. And for a night on the town, are you? Oh, no, we were on a party trip in the town. Mama the College, first yeah. 15? Yes, the one. Have you been playing in town, or? Oh, no, we were, um, what's your play? Most of the skills I learned as a reporter I'm using now from just your basic how approaching people, having the confidence to approach a total stranger and say, hi, what's your name, what's going on here, to the interview technique. Not necessarily the sitting down back at the station uh, written statement, which is really important for evidence, but just the basic what's been going on here, who was involved, when did it happen, is it still going on? You know, just, just the basic questions to ask pretty quickly to get the story about what's going on, which is really important in frontline policing. Was that the person that you saw last, Lorraine? Yeah. Is she the doctor you've seen recently? Mm -hmm. It what is. Was it you saw her today. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what happened today when you went in? Did she give you any medication or anything? No, I got that at the Monaco Clinic at the Fugget unit on Tuesday. I've got no regrets about not going to university. Although next year I'm going to do university papers now because I've decided, well, okay. if I do say psychology papers or something, it's gonna help me in, in my job that I've chosen now, which which I'm gonna settle in this job and you know make a career of it.
The world that Brett Hanna works in is the beauty business. In fact, Brett is the highest qualified male beauty specialist in New Zealand. Just that edge it's a job he loves. Oh, that looks excellent. Good. Brett, tell me how you got started in this business. How I got started? Oh, that's a bit of a story. Well, I left school when I was 15. Just shut your eyes again for me. And I had the faintest idea what I was going to do. And Dad worked in the post office and he said to me that he thought I should go in and work for the government because it would be a nice, safe and easy job. So I went into that for a year. Absolutely hated it. Couldn't stand a desk job at all. So I thought maybe that I'd like to go into hairdressing and have an apprenticeship. But I needed to get my school C, which I never originally had, so I went back to night school. And then I went for an interview. And I got a hairdressing apprenticeship, which took me through four years, which was really great. I really enjoyed learning those skills. And then I got the opportunity to travel to Australia. And when I got over there, I did a few more courses in hairdressing and I decided to do a beauty specialist course, which was all about doing skincare and makeup. And now I'm qualified as a beauty therapist and a nail technician. And that's 14 years of my history, and nine of it has been training. And I think probably if I had to say to any other young person that was out there how to go about doing the same sort of career as me, then I would have to say that skills are the most important thing. And don't you look gorgeous? Thank you very much. Just okay. a little bit of water. I'm just going to put that on the edge there. That's one. Brett's skills are so well regarded, he helped write the unit standards that will soon be the basis for all beauty qualifications in New Zealand. Skills that helped him start a business of his own. Have a drink with us. I will. I must have been coming to you for three years now. You have been. You've been quite a regular client. Three years, a long time, isn't it? Who would have thought that I'd still be here after three years? Now, this is your CV or curriculum vitae, story of my life, and that is the bones of you. So if no one reads... Want to know how to get a job when you leave school? Then learn how to put your CV together. At Aurere College in Auckland, transition teacher Marianne France believes that the craft of compiling a CV is one of the most important skills she can pass on to her fourth see, formers. As you're here, surrounded by paper, how much easier it is if it's in a folder and you can just turn over the pages. It's easy for you, and if it's going to be easy for you, it's going to be easy for... One of Marianne's former pupils is a good example of what she means. Shane Hart used the CV she first helped him prepare to land his first job at Comprint, one of the country's biggest printers. Every week, Comprint produces hundreds of thousands of glossy magazines. The same presses also turn out huge numbers of those advertising leaflets that turn up in your letterboxes. And Shane's job is as an estimator, working out for the advertisers and for Comprint how much the printing will cost. Yeah, there's 15 dealers throughout New Zealand, so we'll have to show a separate price for each change out for them. Right. Additional on the quote. Yeah, and that's trimmed and bleed, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. Now the hassle, we need it by this afternoon. Can you do that for us? Uh, give it a good go. Because printing ink wouldn't flame the expert on his hands, Shane couldn't be considered for the printing apprenticeship he first applied for. But because his CV showed he'd done a link computer course, Comprint thought of him for the estimated job, which was also coming up. When he left Aurere College at the end of the sixth form, estimating was about the last thing on Shane's mind. I sort of like wanted to get into selling musical instruments or something, because I've just sort of like just gotten into starting to play guitar, and um, I always thought I'd like to get into some area of the music industry. That's basically what I did want to do, but that, I tried it, but it never worked out. When I left school, I went to the employment service, and nothing came out of that. Well, I went back at least you know, 
about twice a week, I think, for about six weeks. Then he updated his CV folder from the fourth form and started his job hunt. I must have been at least 70 I applied for. 40 odd interviews out of that, which none of them proved fruitful, except for one. <laughs> the advertisement that Shane responded to had nothing to do with the job he eventually got. Luck came into it, but Shane hadn't left things to chance. Most of all, his world of work opened up because he kept looking and because he remembered and put into practice the principles of putting together a CV. At 17, Watergate Ropata was a student at Aotea College near Polarua. At 19, she's back there as a professional taking classes in funk. In 91, in my seventh form year, I started dancing with performing arts, and from there on, I've been, I've been dancing since. I come from a very strong Samoan background, and my father, he was a very hard man, and still is a very hard man, wasn't um, happy with me on taking up dancing, so I sort of rebelled, got a lot of um, Samo hidings, but you know, that's how life goes. Watergate is talented, but she was also determined to make dancing her career, whatever the obstacles. I got into a set commercial, and that was my first year of dancing. After I, I t I'd done that, I got into dancing into the Michael Fowler Centre with Annie Crummer, which we've done um, her language song. Um, I've also, my dancing has taken me to North Korea, where our dance company, K Company, won the dance section, song and dance section out of about 25 countries that were there in North Korea. Watergate was born in Samoa. And among the courses she teaches at the Performing Arts Centre are classes in Samoan dance. Culture and career become one. I found my, my inner person. I found to be more confident with people. I, I think it's um, really got to do with yourself, to, um, to, take, to love yourself enough to go out there and do it. In performing arts, you gotta like, you gotta like be yourself, say who you are, be who you are, and just stick to it. It's it's more, it's more um, on where you want to take yourself. The performing arts is something with commitment, and discipline, and if you haven't got it, then, and, but you've got the performance, but there's no commitment and there's no discipline, then it won't take you nowhere. Leonard Stubbing's job started part-time, and it's still that way. I was working in um, school C year, my most important year. Um, I filled an application form here. Um, I got an interview, I came in, and I got the job. When I got the job, I was so pleased to get it. Um, I've got no idea how pleased I was. Leonard was also pleased he attended a link retaining course while he was still at Rutherford High. He enjoyed it so much he decided to accept an offer for what he hoped would be extended hours after he left school from the sixth form. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Hello. Would you like to move up? I started on check outs. Um, I got about between 10 and 15 hours a week, so all the late nights I used to work. I see 110, thank you. Things haven't worked out as planned. Leonard's hours have been reduced to between 3 p.m. and 6 every day, the same as when he was still at school. And that's for three pairs, it's mm -hmm. $10.98. Despite the disappointments, he knows that retailing is the pathway he wants to follow. It improved my self-confidence a heck of a lot. Um, it's excellent school to have, you know, to be able to deal with the public and all that. It's, that's, I can't stress how important that is in any job. Public relations and dealing with other people is very important. That's a three pack. So you're I did um, try to get full-time work here. It's not offering. I've, I've asked and I've asked and I've asked, but there's no full-time work here, which is, is a shame because I'd love to work here full-time. 
The reduced hours offer at least one compensation. They leave Leonard plenty of time to chase full-time work. I look in the paper every morning for a job. I write letters to after employers. I've written um, some letters off to Hugh Wright's, Helen Steen's men's hair stores. I've, I apply for jobs. I've applied for um, a job in London Bookshop. I didn't get it. I also applied for a job in a butcher, <laughs> which isn't really my scene, but I needed work, so, and the experience of going through an interview is, is quite important too. To start her pathway, Nairi Cooper looked at the training courses available. I was at school and I sort of thought, thought to myself, what shall I do in life? I right, thought of all these things and sort of something that would interest me. And I ended up running away to various polytechs in my area, <clears throat> asking them what sort of courses they had to offer. And um, ended up, I um, did, ended up doing a pre-trade course. Um, and automotive engineering. Um, I wanted something that would be a challenge. I didn't want to do anything of the norm, as in sort of get be in an office or anything. As my mother mother told me she works in an office. She said, "No, don't don't get don't get a job in an office <laughs> and all this." And so, all right, then what shall I do? What shall I do? And ended up just sort of finding something that I thought would be a challenge, and it did interest me. I got lots of friends who are into, into cars and so forth, and got sick of them knowing more than me. Okay, when you break it away, you've got a, well sorry, before you break it away, you've got a carbon lining, haven't you, across the head like that, haven't we? We always get carbon out of the muscle chamber. Okay. There are two strands to Nari's apprenticeship, the hands-on experience at the garage where she works, and continuing study at Carrington Polytech, where she did her pre-trades course. It can give you an incorrect tappet setting, it can give you an incorrect compression. Can add up to a long day. Okay, I so get up fairly early, <laughs> um, turn up to work at 8 o'clock and usually finish around 4.30. Thursday nights I go to night class, that's for stage two. I got that tonight. You're in a cutthroat world today and people, I think qualifications are very important because, you know, without any qualifications and if an employer, you're just walking off the street, an employer looks at you. He says, well, what qualifications do you have? And you say, well, um, I've had lots of experience, but I haven't actually got any qualifications. And he'll sort of think, oh, yeah, you know. I mean, he might employ you, he might not. Take the vacuum low enough, yep. lock it off, and you check it. Reading uh, about yeah. one degree before. Okay. I'll stage two this year, finish that, get that qualification, um, trade cert next year that qualification and I've still, I'll still have a year of my time left so I thought I may as well go for A grade and um, that's the top qualification you can get. off the merit in that particular song. Anyway, I'm Marcus Lush and welcome back to Real FM, the radio station that brings you the world as it is and shows you how to get the skills that you need. Getting skills in the motor trade begins with an automotive pre-trades course. Malcolm Stack started the course at Carrington Polytech at 18, direct from secondary school. The motor industry helped set the standards for the course. Everything Malcolm learns will be recognised by employers throughout New Zealand. 100 means perfectly airtight. Every time you take it off, it'll be different. If you always start at 100, okay, that's fine. Once a week, Malcolm goes to a garage in West Auckland for his work experience. Today he's in for a surprise. OK, bye. OK, Malcolm. Oh, good. I've got heaps of work on today. Hey, listen, I've made a decision. I'm oh, going to take you on. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I know. I thought you'd say that. Mm. So, uh, so when you finish with tech, it'll be a full-time job. Excellent. All right? Yeah. That's for sure, too. OK? Yep. Sure. Garage owner Laurie Gilbert has given his decision plenty of thought. 
He's a good kid, and he obviously wants to get on, and he's trying. He's not just sitting at home watching TV or whatever. He's, he's out there and he's having a go, and that's what I like, full stop. With that course, I had to do a, um, had to do one day a week work experience, and I met the boss's daughter, Shell, and um, she sort of found out for me that, you know, he needed someone up here just to give him a hand, you know, because work experience is sort of free, so for the employer, and um, then it sort of just went from there, and um, you yeah, know, just found out I got a job today, so I'm wrapped. Yeah, I also work in a garage over in Ponsonby. I work from 10 at night till 6 a.m. Saturday morning. It's, um, it's a hell of a shift. So, um, especially because I don't usually get any sleeping during the day either. From, you know, Friday morning, I'm usually at tech or working or whatever, I'm doing something anyway. And, um, and I just sort of up at 7 o'clock Friday morning and I'm all the way through to sort of 7 o'clock Saturday morning. So. <laughs> I sort of end up sleeping my whole weekend away and um, doesn't leave much for socialising and that sort of thing. This off-roader I've got, uh, it's something, something that someone put together but didn't quite get it finished. It was dirt cheap and sort of got it running and added a few things onto it and fixed it up and it runs really well now and so I take that out just about every weekend now and give it heaps. How do you go about getting skills? Malcolm thinks it's simple get out and do something, go into a place and say, look, I'll work for nothing, so you can see how I work. You know, if you want to take me on at the end of the two weeks or however long you, you think, you know, for the work experience, then so be it. If you don't, well, I'm out the door and I've got a little piece of paper that says I've done two weeks here work experience. Wherever you live in New Zealand, to get recognised skills in printing, there is only one place to go. The National School of Printing at the Auckland Institute of Technology. Students from all around the country attend courses which offer qualifications in every aspect of the trade. They learn on a variety of printing presses, from small units that have been around for years, to large presses with 1990s technology. Because the industry depends on the AIT for its off-the-job training, they've put in the latest presses to learn on. Students who gain their skills here should be ready to move directly into the workforce. Mastering technology is only part of the story, and printing is much less a male preserve than it used to be. Much of the process still depends on craft, a good eye, sound judgment, and attention to detail. You can do courses full-time or part-time, as part of an apprenticeship or as a means of finding out about printing. And whatever you do, there's a framework of unit standards being put in place which will give you a qualification that will be recognised nationally and internationally. A generation ago, paste up was something new in printing. At AIT it is still taught as an introduction to the way the same principles are now applied by computer. Down the bottom? Yeah. The silkscreen carousel is streamlined but rudimentary. Outside an industry, they can get far more sophisticated. At the School of Printing, the priority is mastering the basics. Get these right first, they believe and you can build on your skills on the job. <laughs> Sasha Zoss is in her first year at Auckland College of Education. She's here because of a link course she attended at Mount Roskill Grammar in her sixth form. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, 
So I did this link course to see, and it was early childhood education. And we went into schools and we learnt about children, and I really felt that that was where I wanted to be. You're making good progress here, Shasta. Oh, it's a bit miss messy. Oh, yeah, good. Lock in that. Lock yep. in the rest of it. Okay. You might even need to overpaint some of this a wee bit more yeah. and bring it up yeah, to I'll the edges. Oranges. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Okay. Within four years, I want to get a degree, a Bachelor of Education, and that will enable me to be a high school teacher and a primary teacher and also travel overseas and teach overseas as well. Like Sasha, all students enrolling for a primary diploma of teaching now have the option of taking a Bachelor of Education course as well. Sometimes they go to university for lectures, but most of the classes are in the college. You're into your third uh, lecture of social class today, and you're getting quite uh, into it quite deeply. What does the word culture mean? I'm going to ask you shortly. Materialism. The teachers from university come into college and do our lectures for us in college. And we get two papers a year. And by the end of four years, we've got a whole degree. Yeah. You have your own culture, like me, I'm someone. Mm. And then when you go into a group, that's, it's just heaps of um, Balangi people in it, I mean, Pakeha people. Mm. And then you sort of adapt to that group. And that, that means you're not, you're not in, that, in your own culture in that group. Most afternoons, Sasha has a part-time job looking after children. The dancing coke cans. You tell your master her you wages know. help pay her college fees, and there are other advantages. What shape is this container? Things I learn at training college I can bring to the children and yeah. see that they actually do learn that sort of thing. Oblong, that's really that's right. good. Okay, what's this? This makes it different from an oblong, doesn't it? It's kind of like a triangle out there. Do you want to draw the shape of the box for me? All right, okay, you're going to make an oblong game. Okay. You just draw the shape first of all. <laughs> Robert Lees is a trainee meat inspector. He came here at the end of his fifth form year at Oteki College. Well, I've got an opportunity to come into the, this plant to do transition work experience as uh, assistant meat inspector. And I did that for eight weeks. Did my best out there, showed them what I was all about. We all got on the ride, and just before the school holidays, they offered me to become a trainee meat inspector. Always since since I was a boy, you know, seven or living on a farm, always wanted to become a butcher because doing home kills and for ourselves at home, doing killing the layoffs, I always had an interest in it. Robert chose to be a meat inspector because of the chance to get a formal qualification at the same time. Stage one's just as um, learning all the parts that I have to inspect and my, the judgments and dispositions and diseases, defects that I'll, that I'll come across. If you impalpate the whole anatomy of the gut, the spleen, the esophagus, the rumen. Perhaps the hardest thing to get used to coming straight from school was the long hours. I was seven to four usually, yeah. For the first four months I was doing it, but had a, had a period, about two months we were working 10 hour days. It was, it was hard, good money, $8, eight dollars eighty-two an hour. To make sure the meats, it has to be under 12, 12 degrees, minus 12 degrees. And it's just really to uh, keep it cheap, make sure everything is working right. I hope to have um, my boss's, boss's seat one day. Hope to get that far. At Otara in South Auckland, the Aranui Technical Training Centre is one of a new generation of training providers a private tertiary institution with a Māori base. 
An important aspect of Aranui is that the centre is registered with the Qualifications Authority. This means that the certificates at issues when students successfully complete their courses are recognised nationwide. Each course is devised to simulate the corresponding working environment. The hairdressing classroom looks just like a big salon. Well, almost. about hairdressing before I came here now. I know quite a lot. I've been here for a year at the end of this term, ends at the end of this month. And um, <coughs> the end of last year we set first qualification. The end of this year we can set second and third qualification. That's, so we do four papers all together and after that you can be fully qualified hairdresser. The computer courses prepare students for the Pittman's examinations in word processing and spreadsheets. The computers and the software are about as up to date as you can get. I actually came up here for modelling and so um, computer work was a bit... Um, the secondary, but now I've taken computer work as you know the first thing, first day, first thing that I like to do. I reckon um, in the future there's just so much for kids these days, you know, especially young computers. The chill fantasies run wild, and you're uh, home again. Could come true. The radio the skills course is new, and with the explosion of iwi radio network, popular. It's been designed to meet standards for approval and accreditation by the Qualifications Authority. You could be one of five lucky winners, but be quick, entries close January 29. Send your fantasy to Cadbury Continental Valentine's Day competition, P.O. Box 7247 Christchurch, and make your dreams come true now. Jenny Trevelyan is in the second year of an apprenticeship at Photography by Wolf of Wellington. Instead of going to a polytech or training provider, she'll get her skills entirely on the job in a course that's been structured by her employer, Simon Wolf, to meet standards soon to be established by the Qualifications Authority. Your job sort of is to spot, to, to make sure, as well as taking a few photos, yeah. you know, after I've taken my few, is just to make sure that everything's, you know, 100%. And you know, that's part of the communication process. I was doing a photography course at school as a bursary subject. Um, I'd only been in seventh form for a term. And uh, Wolf rang my school, Wellington Girls, and said, that they'd like someone just for a part-time job, which would just be cleaning up and mail and things like that. But they were after someone who was looking to a career in photography or was interested at that point. And I was um, recommended by the photography teacher as being one of the keenest. Photographing um, rugby teams as a woman, you're at a de definite advantage. Oh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, you are. Yeah, they'll react to you. One for Jenny, one or two for Jenny. <laughs> Jenny's chance came three weeks after she'd started the after-school job. Simon gave me a camera and I went and took photos and uh, obviously did quite well because next week um, Simon asked if I'd like to work here full-time. Starting off where I was, just working up the front doing serving and cleaning, but then getting down here to the retouching. And sitting down, just move right. You turn more towards me, but keep your face pointed towards that way. 
<laughs> the three-year training program Jenny is following is comprehensive. Many of the classes are held in the evening, portraiture and lighting, as well as darkroom techniques and photo restoration. But the most important thing for Jenny is that if all goes well, she'll come out with a recognised qualification. If I hadn't been getting something at the end of it, I wouldn't have taken the job. Because my parents said to me, sort of, this, is, this will be a tertiary education. Instead of going to a polytech or something, this will be what you get at the end. So your certificate and your apprenticeship and all your qualifications. So it's good that I'm getting all that. So far on Real FM, we've seen the world of work and we've seen how some young people have been getting their skills to start their pathways. What's clear from all these stories is that the world of careers and training is changing. Probably changing faster than most of us realise. To talk about the changes and how they, changes and how they will affect you and me are three people who are helping to make it happen. We've got Trevor here from the Qualifications Authority. Welcome. Cheers. We've got Doris from the Career Service. You're both the government workers. And our third guest is the uh, Free Enterprise Man. You're the employer. You're Gavin and you're the mobile man with two garages in Wellington and one garage in Auckland. Just back to you two first. Um, you're from the Career Service. You're from the Qualifications Authority. You're obviously helping implement the changes. Well, what, what, you, you work for the government, right? Yeah, we do. We're all about listening to those young people and making sure that the changes that we make uh, help them along. I mean, if you look at those young people that were in that um, soap part of the program, yeah, you know, Wayne, what a pain. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Wayne was quite, but I thought Wayne was there, the future. You know, a lot of the rest there are sort of making signals at us that we should be picking up about change. But you, you, you're, you put the things in, like, the tests that you've got to do to, to, well, to the pass, tests. the steps. What we're trying to do is set up programs that are consistent right across the country. And how similar... How, where, do you, where does your whole department come in, Doris? Uh, that's quite separate, isn't it? Yes, it is, Marcus. Uh, for people to plan their careers and their training, they need information, accurate information, up-to-date information. Our job is to pro provide that information to anyone that needs it. Around the schools, we have offices that public people can come into, anyone. We're there to provide the information to plan those pathways. So, so what, what, what was wrong with the old system? Oh, it's too narrow. Yeah. People could only get qualifications if they went through schools, politics, and that kind of thing. Now, what we're working on is making sure that where, they, where they're learning on, on the job and their work, where they're learning at uh, private providers, wherever learning happens, you should get credit for that learning and recognition for it. So That's you're, what we're trying to do. Are you bringing the industries into the schools as well? Is that happening? Is, that, is there a closer association there? Definitely. There's a, cl a much closer link between education and the world of work and training. Much more closely linked so that they serve each other's needs. You know, with all these programs, right, and you might be able to answer this as well, Gavin, you're, you're taking these kids, you're finding out what they want to do, kids, I mean, they're my age, but whatever, and um, you're training them, and then maybe the work isn't going to be there. Is that, is that fair to them to do that? To train someone and say, OK, we're gonna, you're going to do a three-year course at Aranui and Otara, and you're going to learn how to become a radio host, mm. and you tune out 200 of these each year, and there's no work there for them. Is that, is that what you should be doing? Well, that's, I mean, part of what we're trying to do, like a place uh, like Arunui, for example, is working on a range of skills that those people can take away from Arunui and start applying. Jobs aren't guaranteed, but jobs are created. Gavin, in your experience, if I'm 16 or 17 and I think I want to work in a gas station, should I just try that out for six months and see if that's... Is that the way to do it, trial and error? Is that what you find? It's important that, that young people realise that an employer is looking for um, not only a qualification, but skills and an attitude. You, know, you have to have sort of a, a work ethic built into you to say there is I have potential to do this and, and do better. And maybe if, if uh, they only use that as a stepping stone, that's fine. Uh, most employers are happy, Two. provided they can get something back from yes. that. that is person. that a work ethic if I front up at your mobile station and say, I'm prepared to work for nothing? Isn't that just making it difficult for those people who have got the right trainings and should be paid for what they're doing? No, no. Because, because just because someone comes along and says, look, I'll work for nothing, doesn't mean to say that they're going to get a job. 
Well, we saw one of, one of those uh, young guys who did that. He started off working working for nothing. This was hey, the, the guy working in the gas station? Yeah, and, and he was the guy who had that all-night job on, on Saturdays, and you know, he was pretty tired and things yeah. like that. But he started off by going out to work for nothing. And in the end, that created an opportunity for him and his employer to kind of take him on. So it led to something. But, but are you saying people should go in front up and, and say they will work for nothing? Oh, I'm saying that it's one of the solutions. It's not a case of having a right choice, it's a case of having lots of choices, lots of options, and one way to find out about those options is to experiment. And working for a couple of weeks, as one of those young men suggested he was doing in a garage, is a great way to find out if it's what you want to do. We're not talking about working for six months for nothing, we're talking about two weeks sampling where the employer gets to look at the, the young person, and the young person leaves at the end of that with some experience and some skills. It's a win-win situation. What do you think of um, seeing some of the characters we've seen on the, the TV show already, the soap opera and the, the documentary? Leonard in Kmart. Leonard's shown, uh, to me anyway, I, I would employ, if I was in that, that position of employing in that um, uh, outlet, I would actually employ him full time because he's shown he's shown a, an attitude, and, and that's really what counts. He's got an attitude that he wants to work for that particular company. Um, if he's not good enough to employ full time, then why employ him part time? Surely they must have employed someone in the meantime um, on a full time basis. Why not? Why not him? He's he's expressed an interest, you know? so that frustrates me as an employer. That sort of attitude frustrates me as well. As far as your, your system goes, is Leonard doing the right thing? To, he obviously wants to work in retail. Is that, is that the right way to go about to start there part-time? I think that's an excellent way to start, and I was about to um, disagree slightly with Gavin in saying the world of work is changing. The concept of full employment for everybody is, uh, is old, I think. The world of work is moving very much towards young people and adults having lots of different jobs and lots of part-time jobs. So full employment, one job for everybody, is the old world. The new world is lots of part-time work, maybe stitching things together. I think Leonard's made an excellent start. It would be great to see him get full-time employment in retail, but it might not be a reality. He's still doing the right thing. And many of the other young people in, in that a section of the program demonstrated the They're all success solutions. stories, aren't they? Yeah, well, in the sense they've all got their own solution to, you know, one work for nothing. One came up with words like uh, commitment and discipline. If you haven't got those, you might have a bit, have a bit of talent. Felice is a... Uh, he knows it all, but he got a, the rug pulled from under him. Yeah, well, Was his boss wrong again? No, but he was looking good and learning, you know. But he, he thought he had a, a go into that manager's job, and then it all got taken out from under him. And the other thing is he was kind of denying the value of, of training, you know, of learning, where everybody around him was going should, to going should to you that go course. with the flow when it's going good? It was going well for Felice. He was making four sales a day and he had a job. Yeah, that's what I mean. He kind of was looking good and he, and he learned something because all of a sudden it was over. And I mean, that's life, Marcus. It. People are being ma made redundant all the time. Once again, the world of work is changing. But I think what those uh, young people in the documentary showed, and also the kids in the soap, is that, hey, you get knockbacks, but you've got to keep going. You might lose your job. Your mother mightn't like what you're going to do. Should we yeah, listen to our parents? Because they don't know, do they? I mean, they're, they're, they're 20 years older. That they're in a relevant world. The world's different now from what it was in their day, that's for sure. Sometimes parents have uh, useful things to say, but sometimes they're a little bit out of touch. When do people work out they've done the <coughs> wrong choice? Is that when you start hating a job? Is that when it's time to leave? I don't know that there's ever such a thing as a really wrong choice. I think every job that you do, you gain skills. And one of the things that uh, is really important for people to realise is the transferable skills they're picking up. Mm. In other words, skills you gain at a job. OK, you might not like the job and you might decide to leave it and go to another one, but you'll definitely take good things from the job that you've left over to another job. So it's all about collecting skills yeah. on the, the way. The two people on the, on the soap went through a, a skills assessment course. I've never heard of this, you know, I've never been to one myself, I'm not quite sure, I might be able to design surfboards or something, but have they just come in recently and how do people find out about those? Is that something that happens from school? Mm -hmm. A skills assessment course is a course which enables um, a variety of people to figure out what skills they've already got. Now the young fellow on the tape thought that he had absolutely no skills whatsoever. When he got there he discovered he had a whole lot of computer based skills. It's really important that people find out what skills they've already got so that they can use those when they're planning their pathways. And what do people with no skills do? I think everybody's got skills, Marcus. And it's up to the skills. Propaganda. I really wish I'd done that course today. Yeah? Computer design's definitely the way to go. Like, I can see myself in a couple of years, you know, I'll have my own little surf shop, design the latest up to the second surfboards, chicks on each arm, <laughs> down at the surf carnival, you know? In your dreams. I promise, next time I get the chance, I'm gonna be in like a shot. Well, why don't you go tomorrow? Well, you got my place. Yeah, well, um, see, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. What? The way you've been going on about it. You know, you see, but the cricket's on tomorrow, you know? 
Can't miss that, eh? like the show. This Pathways presentation is only the start. In the pipeline are 20 more programs like this and with the help of the Careers Service and the National Bank we're putting together a series of 20 episodes with stories, documentaries, discussions and backup material which will cover the whole range of training and job opportunities opening up for young New Zealanders. Look out for the real thing, the Pathways resource on training and jobs. For more information phone 09 522 0733 or write to us, Pathways, PO Box 26119, Epsom, Auckland. Mm -hmm.